The Shy Quiet Boy is actually so powerful and I feel like men don't realize that and that's why we can't ever let this get out to the masses. We need to gatekeep this from men. Okay, hello everyone. It's Sunny. Welcome to one of my favorite, most exciting videos that I have to film because it's back to a hyper-specific book trope which are literally my favorite to film ever. And this one I'm so excited for because it's one that I haven't done before but it's I've discovered secretly, not so secretly, and to no one's surprise. Probably like my favorite romance trope ever. Everyone knows. The famous book trope which is Grumpy Sunshine. People eat it up. I discovered another trope which I actually think is way better than Grumpy Sunshine which is Shy Boy Sunshine Girl. The masterpiece that this trope is something about a shy awkward introverted boy looks like he's never felt the touch of a woman before but then sunshine is the one who gets him to open up something about that is gonna do it for me every single time it's my kryptonite my friends all know it if i see a boy walk into a room and he looks at no one talks to no one literally doesn't do anything just stands there like an npc like i want him okay so let's start with the book that started this insane craze wildfire by hannah grace hannah grace wrote icebreaker and i tried reading that a while ago and i like dnf'd it i didn't like it then i was like okay let me give this second book a shot because i had heard that it was like kind of this trope like when i read it and i was like wait a second wait why he kind of and it was like the best shy boy i've ever seen written in a book ever literally everyone needs to read this let me tell you what it's about. It's about another boy on the hockey team. He's one of the teammates. His name is Russ. So quiet. Fine as hell, by the way. He literally could have anyone that he wanted. And you can really hear it from his like inner dialogue. Like he is just a frazzled little boy. And the girl is Aurora. And she is like the exact opposite to him. She is very outgoing, super popular, gorgeous. And they end up crossing paths with each other one night at this random party. They are drawn to each other just immediately. Um, And they actually end up having a one night stand at this party, which normally I hate that trope. Except for the fact that I was literally eating it up and loving it in this book like, this book actually wrote that trope the best i've ever seen it like they did it right like the tension the tension like built like so well even in like that first scene that i was just like getting so many butterflies and i was like oh my god i just love russ so much because even though he's shy and awkward he's like so respectful to women which by the way i think that's what i like like green flag shy boys like are respectful towards women literally had never gotten butterflies like that reading like a one night stand both of them think that the other person doesn't actually like them like it was just like a hookup it turns out that both of them are now camp counselors at the same summer camp and they meet each other and it's like oh that's awkward i loved honestly the first part of this book like the first half they meet each other the one i stand the build up and then like being like oh do they like me like do they not like me i feel like they don't like me and it's literally just because he is so shy she thinks that he wants nothing to do with her seems like he's ignoring her but actually it's just she makes him so nervous in actuality they both like each other so much everything that he did was so endearing to me like oh my god he's literally like my perfect fit. Like the shy quiet boy is actually so powerful and i feel like men don't realize that and that's why we can't ever let this get out to the masses we need to gatekeep this from men. Okay, the next book that I have for this trope is Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez, um, which Abby Jimenez is one of my favorite book authors in general. I think I have another one of her books in this list too. This is the third book in the Friend Zone series, but it's like all interconnected standalone, so you don't really need to read the other books. I got my battery. One second. Okay, we're back. The guy in this book isn't like awkward, introverted, shy like Russ was in the last book, um, but he's definitely just more like calm, reserved type of guy. And then the girl is like super socially outgoing, kind of out of pocket, says out of pocket things, which I could personally identify with. Vanessa is actually an influencer and she like travels really trying to make like the most of her life because both her mother and her sister both died before they became 30 because of ALS. Vanessa suddenly has to take custody of like an infant daughter from her half-sister. One night the baby's like screaming will not calm down so that's when Adrian her next door neighbor gets like annoyed and then he comes over um, and turns out he's like the baby whisperer because he like literally holds her and then she shuts up right away and Vanessa's like wait in a second and then that's kind of how they become friends. I like the fact that you can tell that they just like got along with each other even though it wasn't like super like lusty from the jump vanessa's obviously like oh my gosh wow a hot lawyer has just showed up on my doorstep and is putting my baby to sleep that's crazy like love that for me literally is so iconic because after that encounter she goes to the bathroom and she films a vlog and she's like guys you will not believe what happened to me which is totally something that i would do like she was so real for that like, you got to share the wealth fully aware and cognizant of the fact that she might not even have a couple years left in her life because she might also succumb to als and that's what makes her super hesitant to like start anything and adrian like i thought that he was like i don't think he was like as my type as russ okay not that this book recommendation is about me but like let's be honest like i enjoy a book based on how much the man in it is my type it could be the worst book in the world but if the man in it is exactly my type I'm giving it a five stars. In this book, I think he's like less my type, but he's still like such a good book boyfriend, like great main character, I think. Like, I think that the girl in this book seemed more similar to me. So I feel like if you combine those two books, like if there was a book where literally like the girl was exactly like me and then the guy was exactly my type, 
I need to be put down. She like finds herself falling for him even though she knows that she shouldn't and doesn't even want to. Like she's made strict plans with herself that she's not gonna fall for anyone. She's not gonna start anything because she does not know how much time she has left. This can't happen, this can't happen. That tension was so good. I just loved it so much. The next book is Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. Oh my gosh, I read this entire book during class on my laptop secretly. Professor was like two inches away from me. I feel like this book is less like shy boy sunshine girl, but like just because of like life circumstances, she just has the impression of being kind of provocative. And let me explain the premise and it'll make more sense. Basically, the girl in this is Crystal and she has just like had the worst life circumstances ever. And because of these life circumstances right now, she she's like moonlighting as a stripper in a strip club. And then the boy in it is Gabriel. He literally just asks to like get him more comfortable with contact with women. Like when he was younger, he had this big extremely traumatic thing happened to him now he's an adult but he's still really affected by what happened when he was younger and it's like been keeping him from like going out and finding love and like meeting people and stuff and he like doesn't want to feel like that anymore and so that's why he goes and he asks crystal like will you please help me like you don't need to do anything you don't need to sleep with me it's literally just things like touching his wrist when she comes and she meets gabriel he's just like so like good you can just tell that he has like this quiet strength to him and that like scares her so much because she doesn't think that she's like good enough and so because of that she originally is like i don't want to do this i don't want to do this eventually she agrees to do it because she really needs the money and that's kind of like how they first meet and they kind of like learn more about each other gabe is so sweet like he's just like so patient and so gentle with her like and then you can just see them like opening up to each other oh, and i just love gabriel Next, I have another Abby Jimenez book, which is Yours Truly. It's actually probably my favorite romance book of all time, if not like one of my top favorites. This is also part of a series, is it? I also love this because I'm the biggest Arianator ever, and Yours Truly is such an underrated album. Okay, this is the second book in the Part of Your World series. They're interconnected standalone, so you, again, you don't need to read the first one. I didn't. So it's about two doctors. A doctor, Brianna, which love women in higher academia, love women in STEM, love women in the medical profession. And then we have the other doctor, and his name is Jacob. And Jacob is, like, so quiet, introverted, and, like, one of the main reasons for that is because he suffers from social anxiety, and he, like, goes to therapy for it, takes medication for it. We love the representation, and I actually love, like, the mental health part of this book a lot. Literally, he's just a walking green flag. Like, anyone goes to therapy, Walking Green Flag. The Auburn Head, I think, if you're into Auburn Heads. I know, like, my friend is. So if you're watching this, you know. Jacob is, like, a new doctor. He comes to work at the hospital. They run into each other in the ER, and it's just, like, not a good first encounter. Like, not a great first impression. He actually ends up writing her a letter and leaving it. And I think that was so, so endearing. Like, the day that I get a handwritten note from a man, it's over. It's over for me. And she ends up actually writing him a letter back. That, like, kind of becomes their thing. I am actually not the biggest sucker for like, a letter trope, like, the email trope. I think that I'm skeptical of this trope because I think that texting a lot without seeing each other in real life creates a false sense of intimacy in this book like i actually really liked it like i thought that the letters were really cute brianna is like discovering that he's actually really funny and like witty and like like this is another one where it was truly just like a friends to lovers um where they actually did have a friendship first before it really like turned into anything romantic which i always prefer it that way jacob actually ends up wanting to donate his kidney to brianna's brother who needs a kidney donation because they're like a match that's kind of like how they really like deepen their relationship i remember reading this book i just kept thinking like jacob is like so the definition of just like handsome and see i think that's one thing about me is that a guy who like doesn't talk much shy quiet but with like a killer smile like is my own definition of handsome okay the next book that i have on this list is powerless by elsie silver this is the third book in another interconnected standalone series and it's the first one that i read in the series i literally haven't read any other one in the series and i loved it fine the trope was just most interesting to me it's like slow burn childhood friends to lovers between jasper and then we have sloan sloan is at the beginning of this book engaged to her fiance he's just like a sleazy disgusting man me when i was reading it, i was literally in what world would a 10 out of 10 girl ever go for such a mid guy turns out it's just a whole setup because it's gonna financially like help her father i guess she was like willing to take one for the team which she's stronger than me because i would never she actually ends up running away from the wedding because she finds out that her fiance was literally cheating on her so she runs away from the wedding with jasper obviously they have both been madly in love with each other ever since they were younger she thinks that he does not see her as anything more than just like a little sister he would not let anything happen just because like she was younger like never wanted to like cross that line and sloan like still remembers that and you know that i was eating it up he's not like shy um he's just like more like broody and and then Sloane is like super sunshiny. Oh my god, I literally forgot about this, but literally her nickname is Sunny in this book. And the way that I was reading it, I was gonna jump scare every single time. Oh my god. But the way that literally her nickname is my full name, I'm like, what? This is why it's impossible for me to get a nickname, which is so sad. It's like my passion hobby is to create nicknames for other people. In fact, that my name is so non nicknameable. It's actually my Roman Empire. I think about it all the time. Um, and then I get sad. The tension was like insane. <laughs> I also read this book during class and I was like so nervous fighting for my life in this class because I'm like, if anyone looks, like if anyone glances at my laptop screen, even just for a second, like it's over for me. <laughs> Brightness was on like 
one. Um, and the last book that I have, Happy Place by Emily Henry. This book is actually like a second chance romance. It's like the kind of second chance romance structure where you like see the past timeline like interspersed with like the present timeline. They aren't together, but in the past you see them like falling in love. I just loved just that past timeline, <laughs> falling in love with each other. And then obviously eventually at the end, you will see like why they ended up breaking up. So I didn't care about that part at all. And they met when they were in college. Harriet is super outgoing. She becomes fast friends with him. He is like shy and reserved. And I think that just makes a fun dynamic because like shy boys need like the outgoing sunshine girl to like get through their defenses, like make them feel really, really comfortable. That was like exactly their dynamic and that's how they became close. I just love reading about girl characters who are just like really good at like making fast friends with people. It doesn't matter like how quiet or like giving nothing the guy is. I just love books that are like that so much. Well, that was the last book on my list. I wish there were more. So if you guys have any recommendations with this trope that you think that I would like, please let me know. I just want to know like what your type is. Like can everyone comment? Like tell me like what trope you are. Like if you're a sunshine girl, like if you're the grumpy, like if you're the shy one and then what your type is. That's gonna be all. Thanks so much for watching. Um, You can follow me on my socials. They're all linked in the description and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. Good fortune, Toby.